All right, everybody, so today we're going to be doing Ubuntu 20.04.2.0 LTS, which stands for long-term support. I'll be showing you how to install that in VirtualBox on your Mac, and this tutorial should also work pretty similarly for Windows. So if you have a Windows PC, you should be able to do this as well. I like to make these videos every year, kind of updating things, because a lot changes. Uh, and these are some of my best videos, so you guys really like them and they help a ton of people out, so that makes me feel great. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so the first thing we need to do, of course, is install VirtualBox. So as I'm recording this video, this is the latest version of VirtualBox. Be sure you go to virtualbox.org and the big blue download button you click on that and it's going to take you to the downloads page. Now when you get to the downloads page, if you scroll down just a tad, you should see something that says VirtualBox 6.1.18 or whatever version it is right here, platform packages, and you can see the different versions right here that you can download. Now it is important to know what your host machine is, so again, we're on a Mac, so we're just going to click on the OS 10 host. And when you click on that, it'll begin downloading VirtualBox for you, the DMG file. And you can see that it is downloading right there. Now, I'm actually not going to install this because, well, I already have it installed, but we can go ahead and open that up real quick. And you're gonna get this little window open up right here. So you can double click right here to actually install VirtualBox. And then you also have your user manual and an uninstall tool. So if you ever want to uninstall VirtualBox, uh, this will run, I believe in terminal and uninstall the program completely for you. But yeah, if we just double click on the package file, it's gonna open up the installer window and you just go through it like you can any other program. So you might have to click allow right here, that's fine. But yeah, uh, you just go through this and install VirtualBox. Now, I do want to tell you one thing about installing VirtualBox for the very first time. And this goes with any Oracle product that you may put on your computer. When you get to the very end of the installation, you're probably going to get an error. And this error could look a little something like this right here. So it might say something like kernel driver not installed, or it could look different. It could say something like you need to open system preferences in order to allow something. So it may look like that, or it may just tell you to open system preferences. But what you have to do is you actually have to go into your system preferences and you have to allow the installation to continue. So it's gonna look a little something like this in your system preferences. You have to go into the security and privacy section and then go into general right here and once you do that, you should notice at the bottom of your screen something that looks a little like this. Now, it's not going to have this red box because, well, this is just whoever made this uh, did this. But you should see something. It'll say system software from developer Oracle America was blocked from loading. And you need to click on this allow button. And you also may need to unlock your system preferences. So if you have a password on your computer, you might have to click this lock icon to actually get into these settings to change them. But once you see this allow button, you just click on that. And once you click that, you just close this installer window and you got to open it one more time. And now, once you get through this, you should be able to install VirtualBox. But like I said, I already got it installed, so I'm not going to be doing that today. Okay, so once we get VirtualBox installed, we need to obtain a copy of Ubuntu Desktop. And you can do that by going to ubuntu.com and you can click on this download section right here. And it's gonna bring these drop downs right here and this is the different versions that you can download. But what we're focused on today is just a Ubuntu Desktop version. So we can click right here and it's gonna bring up the two versions currently available for Ubuntu. So we're going to be focusing on the long-term support version, which is 20.04.2.0. And there's also a 20.10 version. And I'm probably going to do a video showing you how to install that one as well, but it's pretty much the exact same. But basically, really, the difference here is one of them is long-term support. So you can see 
uh, you get to 2025. And the other one's short term. So this one only goes to July 2021. So yeah, you can choose which one you want, but today we're gonna be focusing on the 20.04 one. And you just click on the download button and it's gonna download a copy of the ISO file for you. And this file is what we need to actually uh, put in the virtual box and install Ubuntu in a virtual machine. And this goes for any operating system. So if you've got Windows 10, you would need to download a Windows 10 ISO in order to install it. Now this file is about 2.88 gigabytes, but because this may take a while depending on your download speeds, I've already got this file uh, downloaded, so uh, we don't need to do that today either. Okay, so once you get VirtualBox installed and you've got your Ubuntu ISO, we can get going here. So go ahead and open up your VirtualBox for the very first time. Uh, you may get pop-ups saying something like, you know, this program's downloaded from the internet, are you sure you want to open it, all that kind of stuff. Just hit allow on it. Now your VirtualBox is not going to look like this. I already have a virtual machine installed because, well, I use VirtualBox quite a bit and Windows 10. So you're not going to see any of this. You're going to see a blank screen right here basically and you're going to see a blank sidebar. So totally ignore all this right here. What you're going to need to focus on is creating a new virtual machine. So there's a little new button right here. You just go ahead and click on that. We can start the process of creating our virtual machine. So first off the name. So the name is whatever is going to appear over here in the sidebar. So if you have a ton of virtual machines you definitely want to name it uh, something recognizable. Maybe you're going to have multiple versions of Ubuntu for some reason. So make this a recognizable name. For the purpose of this video today though I'm just going to call it Ubuntu 20.04.2.0 and we'll just put LTS as well. So again, it does not matter what you name it, but put whatever you want right there. Something recognizable preferably. Now, as you can see down here, once you start typing a name, it tries to recognize what operating system you are wanting to install. So it recognizes that it's gonna be Linux and it's gonna be Ubuntu 64-bit. Now, for some reason you choose a name that's not recognizable, You'll have to actually go into these drop down menus and choose which operating system you would like to install. Now this right here, machine folder. So this is where your virtual machine files are actually gonna be stored on your computer. Now what are these files including? So it's basically including a virtual hard disk. So all your virtual machines contents will be stored in there. It's including another file that uh, it's for logs and then there's another one uh, I'm not really sure what it is <laughs> and then there's another one that kind of remembers your settings I guess I can go ahead and show you what this might look like so here's my default folder this is the one that creates uh, by default for you in your home folder if we go in there it's another folder of your virtual machine so again there's my Windows one already and if we go in again there's those four files that I was talking about so this one right here is going to be your biggest because that is what stores pretty much everything but you can put this machine folder wherever you want to i have videos on the channel showing you how to move this later or install your virtual machine directly on something else so maybe you don't have much room on your host system and you want to install your virtual machine on an external ssd or something well you can totally do that right here but anyways once you got this all sorted, you just hit continue. Now right here is the memory size. So this is gonna be the RAM that the virtual machine is going to use. Now the good news here is you can change this anytime you want to in your settings. So if you pick a number here that maybe doesn't work out for you or it's a little too slow or something, you can up it uh, all you want to. Now I'm actually gonna do, I believe about two gigs of RAM maybe. Is that two gigs? I have no idea. I think 2048 is about two gigs. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna do about two gigs. Ubuntu, you know, it doesn't require much, uh, but again, you can change this number whenever you want to. You also gotta keep in mind whatever your host machine has, because this is gonna be sharing the RAM 
obviously from your host machine. Now I'm pretty good, I got 16 gigs of RAM, so I can pretty much choose whatever I want to and be fine, but if you're on 8 gigs of RAM, well this might be a little tighter here for you. But anyways, you choose the number you want, we continue again. Now this is that virtual hard disk. You want to create a virtual hard disk. Now, you could even set it up with an existing one uh, if you wanted to, but again, you want to create a new one here. And you want to make sure it's a virtual box disk image and dynamically allocate it. Nine times out of 10 is the one that you want to. So what this means is, let's say you set your storage to 64 gigs. Well, if you choose a fixed size, it's going to use 64 gigs immediately from your host machine. If you use dynamically allocate it, it will allocate more storage until it gets to 64 gigs over time. So this is the more storage friendly option but if you choose a fixed size and you have plenty of storage, it could make your virtual machine actually perform better. But I always do dynamically allocate it, so that's what I recommend to continue. And here's where we can actually choose the size of the drive. Now, again, you can pick whatever you want to here, but it is very important to note that you cannot change this number. So whatever you pick right here, you got to stick with it or you got to delete your entire virtual machine and start the process all over again. Now again, you can pick whatever you want. I'm just going to do 32 gigs for this example here. And once you do that, you can hit create and it's going to add your virtual machine into VirtualBox and you can see it stored right here. So before we uh, start it up, let's go into our settings here and just kind of check on a few things. So Really, there's nothing you need to really change in here. Now, mine's glitching out for some reason, so you can see when you click on stuff, it doesn't really show what title you're in, but that's okay. Um, really, the only thing I recommend changing is we don't need a floppy disk, so you can uncheck that. There's that RAM you can change anytime you want to. It's right here. Your processor, you could bump this up. Uh, depending on how many cores your CPU is, you could bump that up, but most of the time one CPU is good. Uh, acceleration, nothing. Right here, your video memory. So I highly recommend no matter what settings you got, all the way to the right. That's what you need to do right there. Uh, so put this all the way to the right. And if you enable 3D acceleration, if your computer has it, uh, you can make graphics a little bit smoother, but most of the time you can get by without doing that. But really the most important thing, video memory, all the way to the right, no matter what. And for the rest of these, there's really nothing else to change. Uh, shared folders is where you can uh, access folders from your host machine. You can add those here. I have a video showing you how to set those up if you're interested. But once you get all these settings figured out, you just hit OK. It's going to save them for you and now we're ready to start the virtual machine for the very first time. So we can go ahead and click start right here. It's going to bring up another window of the virtual machine starting up for us. Okay so right here is where we're going to select that Ubuntu ISO file that we downloaded a little bit earlier. So all you got to do is hit this folder icon and you're going to see this add button you click on that and we might get an error here I'm kind of hoping we do yes so this is probably the second most common error that you're going to get and this used to not happen to me this happens to me every single time now must be something to do with Big Sur but yeah I get this so many times it's crazy but basically this is an NS error failure and I'll be honest with you guys, I have no idea what this means. I don't know what causes it. But for some reason, when that finder window tries to open, it just crashes. Now, luckily, I did find a way to get around this. So here's what we're going to do. If you get this error, you just hit OK. We're going to go to Settings again. And we are actually going to add the ISO in the settings. So we're going to go to the Storage tab. And you can see right here, uh, if it's not already selected, there's an empty CD drive. So this is a virtual CD drive right here. This is where you can put different disk images like the ISO file. So what we're going to do is over here on the right side, there's another CD. 
If you click on that, you're going to see that it gives you the options to choose a disk file. And that's the one we want to click on. And now our finder window is going to open. And this is where we can navigate to the ISO file that we downloaded. So here is my ISO file. You just navigate to wherever yours is located and you hit open. And what that's going to do is it's going to add in the ISO file to the virtual disk drive. So there it is right there. Now we can hit OK. And now we can hit Start again. Now we still got to select it from this menu, but we don't have to go look for it this time since it's already in there. So you can see that it has loaded it for us automatically. And if it hasn't, you just click on that. A menu right there and you can click it but there we go it's loaded so now we can hit start and now the Ubuntu installation is going to begin so that's how you get around the NS error failure again I have no idea why it happens but all I know is how to get around it now so that's good so we're gonna let Ubuntu do its little checks here and all that stuff uh, it might look a little crazy, some of the stuff going on here, but don't worry about it. Uh, but anyways, I'll come back whenever this decides to put us on the installation screen. So here we are on the very first screen here uh, that we're going to be dealing with. So these little pop-ups here, you can just click X on those. Uh, they don't really mean anything, so get rid of those. But yeah, here we are. We're on the welcome screen. So we have two options here. We can install or try Ubuntu. So we want to make sure we hit install Ubuntu right here. So it wants us to confirm our keyboard layout. So we go ahead and just do that and then we can hit continue. And now it wants us to ask us about which installation do we want. So we can do normal or we can do a minimal. So minimal is literally just your web browser and basic things. But the normal gives you the other stuff like office software and all that. So you can choose whichever one you want here. I'm just going to do the minimal installation just because this is a test video make it go a little quicker but you just choose what you you want there and then on your other options you want to be sure you hit download updates while installing Ubuntu but on this one we're not going to need any third-party software for graphics or other drivers because we're going to be installing VirtualBox guest editions a little later that'll solve all those problems for us so once you get these options figured out just hit continue and now you're going to get the installation type right here now this part usually freaks some people out here, but remember, this is all virtualized, right? So when it says erase disk and install Ubuntu, it's talking about that virtual disk that we created when we set this thing up. So remember, mine was 32 gigs. This is the virtual hard drive. This is not your main computer in any way. So we just want to keep this selected, erase disk, and install now. And it's just going to confirm uh, those changes to the disk again this is not your host machine this is that virtual drive so we just hit continue again so now it wants you to pick your time zone basically so uh, just go ahead and choose whichever one you are and then you can hit continue again and now it wants to ask about your computer account so uh, you just simply type in all your information here now it's kind of funny this actually knows that it's virtual box so <laughs> it creates a little name for you there uh, and which again, you just fill this out however you want it to, and you can even choose login automatically. Uh, and then it's gonna need a password. I'm just throwing something in. Your password should never be that short or easy. You should probably be able to guess which that one is too. So pick a good password. Uh, but once you fill all that out, just hit continue. All right, so now we are finally installing Ubuntu. So. Uh, this is just going to be waiting, obviously, from uh, here on out. So whenever this gets done installing, I will come back. So it says installation is complete. We'll go ahead and just click restart now. Now it wants us to remove the installation medium, which is that ISO file. But uh, we actually don't need to move, remove that. So all you got to do is hit enter. It's totally fine. It wants us to connect our online accounts. Uh, you can do that if you want to, but I'm just going to hit skip. And it wants you to set up the live patch. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that either. Just hit next. And you can help improve Ubuntu by sending them diagnostics. 
Uh, you can choose whichever you want. Uh, turn on your location services. Not going to do that either. And showing you all the different apps that you could install uh, right there. And then we can click done. And here we are. We're on the Ubuntu desktop. We can go into uh, applications and all that stuff, our folders, whatever we want to do. But uh, we need to install the guest editions before we actually, um, you know, get going here. The guest editions. This is the final step uh, before you can start using your Ubuntu. And the guest editions, main thing it does is it just kind of uh, makes all your host machine drivers and screen resolution and all that stuff work. So if I resize this window, you notice that the screen resolution uh, will change and adjust accordingly to whatever window size uh, that you have. And same if you go full screen, it'll actually use your entire screen instead of being a tiny small window. Now I was having some problems, I kind of did it wrong, so uh, I've already got the guest edition installed and working, but I'm going to tell you how to do it the easiest way possible. So do not use the devices menu. You can insert the CD right here, but don't do that. This is way easier and it actually works. So you're going to need two commands. The first one is sudo uh, apt install build dash essential dkms. So this is basically what you need to do uh, because the guest editions usually don't work the first time. So when you install these build essentials, uh, it actually ends up working uh, for you. So yeah, install that uh, through the terminal and then after you install that, you're gonna need another command so this next one will actually be obtaining the guest edition. So we'll do sudo apt get install virtual box guest or you put a dash guest and then dash additions dash ISO. And that is replacing the need to go uh, appear to the devices menu. So run those two commands, do a restart, and your uh, guest editions that actually work, unlike what I did, I completely messed it up. Uh, it was pretty bad, but yeah, you see if I go full screen, it'll actually be completely full screen. Just like that, there you go. But anyways guys, that's how you install Ubuntu 20.04 uh, dot 2.0 uh, long-term support on your Mac using VirtualBox. If you have any problems, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to help you the best I can. I will leave the link uh, that kind of explains uh, the guest editions and those two commands in the description down below. So if you have trouble with that, you can reference that uh, down there. And I'll even put the links to download VirtualBox and Ubuntu just to make everything a little bit easier for you. But anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to click that like button if you enjoyed it as well. And I will catch you all in the next video.